Welcome back guys to another food pot video. Hey, today's video out here in mid-Michigan, mid-June, and boy, it's going to be a scorcher today. It's going to get to about 80 degrees right now. It's going to get up to probably 90 plus. I'm going to get out here this morning and get this done uh, beforehand, but what I'm going to do today is show you how uh, I'm going to try and roll out my rye that you see back here that I planted last fall, and we try and roll that down and then plant over top of it later this summer and see how well that rye will once I lay it down uh, can hold the moisture so today is just going to be rolling that rye down and try and get it to, uh, to terminate by rolling it and then hopefully that rye is just going to break down over over the year and uh, put the nutrients right back into the soil so many of you who may follow Dr. Grant Woods on growingdeer.com know that he does a similar thing and I'm going to try that this year here on my food plot so today's going to be the first step um, and then we're going to go from there. We'll take you along through the journey. So you can see I've got a pretty good stand of rye growing here. What I want to do is I want to roll this down and hopefully, I don't know, hopefully I'm catching it at the right time. Um, I think I've got it about the right time, but we'll see how it turns out. I think it could be possibly just a little bit late on rolling it down. I know there's a certain window you want to try and hit with this stuff. Uh, to crimp it over so that it'll stop growing and then it won't these seed heads won't produce so I'm hoping I'm not too late I'll see what happens after I get it all I'll roll down but first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of take a little bit of a walk through here and I want to make sure I don't have any fawns uh, bedding down in this I know the does like to uh, bring their fawns out in here it's it's good cover for them and I've seen that a bunch of times in the past so I'm just going to go and take a quick walk through. I want to make sure I don't roll over one of them. So this here is what I'm looking out for. Um, right here is a bed, bed spot. Um, probably a doe bedded here. But I wouldn't doubt there's some other doe bedding spots out in here. I just want to walk through and make sure, I, like I said, I don't have any fawns out here. Okay, so you're probably wondering why do you roll this out and what it's going to do is when you roll this rye over it's going to die and then it's basically creating a mat on the surface of the ground. That's going to help later on hold moisture in and the key to doing this is to try and do it before the seed heads on the rye or wheat or whatever cereal grain you're using becomes uh, viable I guess we could say and if we do it early enough then those seed heads won't turn to actually viable seed and we'll just lay this down and it'll become a cover the reason why if you notice I'm doing it kind of all in one direction and that's so that um, if I were to come back later with a, with a drill I can just come in and the, the drill blades will just get right down between all of these you know easily go through this as I plant so that's the reason for doing uh, all in one direction so you'll notice here some of it's still popping back up a little bit it seems like the cult packer works but um, I notice that where my tractor tires go over it works a little bit better if you if you were to go back go and watch Dr. Grant's videos you'll see he has a special piece of equipment that's a big roller and it's got blades on it and it actually crimps the the rye as it rolls over it so you know a lot of food plotters you know we just got to make do with what we have and that's what I'm doing here I've got a cult packer I would say if you don't have a cult packer just drive over it with your tractor tires now if you have a big field that's probably not as uh, as practical but um, for me in a smaller field here I could have just as easily done that with my tractor and just drove over it with my tractor tires say the tractor tires actually work a little bit better than the Culta Packer does. Um, one thing I'll do is I'm going to have to go back and go across ways. And what I'm hoping to do there is when I drive across perpendicular to this uh, rye that's laying down, then the V's on the Culta Packer will actually crimp the stems of the rye and that will kill it. So that's my plan. I'm going to try that. Once I get done with this whole field, I'll roll it all out this way and then I'll come back per perpendicular and go back across it this way. Ok, 
Okay, here I am out in my field. Uh, this is one week later since I rolled this all out. And you can see behind me here. I think it did a pretty good job of uh, killing off that rye. So now you'll see if you can tell in the picture here. But I do have some weeds that are starting to come up a little bit um, underneath this where it was a little bit thinner over here. Next weekend I plan on drilling in some uh, forage soybeans to get uh, this going here. And probably I've got enough to do about half of this acre food plot. So anyone who's watched my videos from last year, you know that this half of my food pot here was planted in clover. And the clover is coming back and doing really well again this year. Um, I tried to kill this off last year. That was kind of my plan. And then I just let it go after I ran a disc through it. And it really just bounced right back. Um, I don't know if you can tell here, but you can see a lot of the... You know, I've got a white clover in here. A lot of the white flower heads here from the clover all, all throughout this half of the plot. So, depending on how much of my soybeans I've got, I may end up drilling in a portion of this here in soybeans and see how that does. Okay, here I am out in my field. Uh, I didn't film this yesterday while I was doing it, but I got my uh, the drill that I rented from the county it came out here and drilled in, in this particular field, uh, a bunch of old seed that I had. And I don't know if any of it's going to take or not, but I figured I'd try it anyway. So I planted some forage sorghum in here and also some field peas. And I don't know, the seed's a few years old. I don't know much of it's going to take or not. But since I had the drill and I was basically paying to uh, plant at least three acres, I figured why not give it a try. Plus I wanted to try how my tractor would pull the drill through the sod that we have here. And it did a pretty good job. I mean, I'm probably at the top limit of what my tractor can handle there with that seven foot drill. Well, here I am in my big food plot. And in this food plot, I drilled in forage soybeans. So these were uh, Eagle Seed soybeans. Um, I think this brand is the Large Lad which I'm going to see, I'm just really trying it out this year, see how it works. Um, it's a little bit late to plant it. I planted it, I think, on June 29th, so a little bit late. Probably should have been in the ground about three, four weeks earlier. So you saw what I did before in this field. I showed you how I rolled the rye down from the previous year, and then I drilled the, the beans over top of it. And I think if I was to do it again next year, what I would do, I would go ahead and drill the beans in first and then roll it second. Um, sometimes the drill got a little hung up on some of the the uh, the rye that's that was laying down, and then I didn't allow enough room for my for my end rows here. And so when I drilled in my end rows, I kind of cut through some of the some of the rye that I had running the other way. So I think I would have done it, I'd do it a little bit different next time. Over on this side of my food plot is where I had my clover and I probably drilled in the beans into about half of my clover plot over here. Um, I had enough beans to probably do almost an acre, maybe a three quarters of an acre. And this plot is about one acre in size. So I knew I was gonna end up uh, drilling some of the beans over into this. The biggest question now is Are the deer gonna let the the beans grow up enough to amount to anything and that's That's really what I'm worried about My hope is that I've got enough beans In the area. I've got a about 40 acres over on the other side of the road from me um, Back over this way. There's another probably 80 acres of beans over here I'm hoping that uh, the deer would much rather go out there than come and eat my beans. That's a little wishful thinking, but I got a nice little secluded spot here for them, so they're probably going to prefer to eat mine. <laughs> anyway, we'll see what happens. Uh, if it's that bad, I'll know next year I'm going to have to put a, put a fence up. So there you have it, guys. There's 
how we uh, deal with our rye or wheat or your winter cereal grains in the summer um, to roll those out and try to create a a, uh, a mat of cover for your next seed um, project coming up this summer so that's what I did here um, check it out um, if you want to see the whole process again um, I recommend checking out Dr. Grant Woods channel the growing deer dot com um, he's got great ideas out there on how to food plot again he's on a more bigger scale so that's why I did this video to show you something that's maybe on a little smaller scale for somebody who doesn't have all the equipment that he has so that's what this video is for and hopefully that uh, that'll show you guys how to do the same thing so if you like this video go ahead and click the like button down below and if you like videos like this go ahead and click the subscribe button make sure you click the little bell underneath and that'll make sure you get a notification whenever a new video comes out so hope you enjoyed this one stay tuned for future ones coming up when I do some planting this summer thanks and we'll see you in the next video